On today's episode, we will be talking about male contest prep. I know most of my listeners are females, but if you have a partner who is thinking about competing or does compete, it will help you better understand what they're doing in terms of their prep. And also a shout out to any male podcast listeners. I really hope this is interesting for you. I'm not a dude, as you know, so I have got a male expert on with me today and I will intro him in a second. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Breakthrough the Bullshit podcast. I am your host, Alice Round. I am pumped to have you here. We are going to really strip back all of the bullshit surrounding nutrition, training, bad diets, everything in the industry, so that we can give you education to get the best possible results. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and let's go through all this bullshit. Welcome back to another episode. Today we are talking about male contest prep. I do not have any testicles, so I am no one that can really comment on this topic, but I've got someone in the studio today with me that does, (laughs) and I am going to intro you to to my interviewee today. I have with me a coach that is an Australian champion natural bodybuilder several times over, not just once, but several times over. And he has also been a really fantastic powerlifter, had some experience there. He's also qualified. He's not just your average PT. He's been to university. He's an accredited nutritionist, strength and conditioning coach, sports scientist, you name it, he's done it. And he is now an online coach as well as personal trainer. He specializes in natty gains for males and also working with a lot of guys in terms of contest prep. So he's been there, he's done it. I'm really excited to have him on the show today. He is Sean McClaney from McClaney Trained. Welcome, Shawnee. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, I forgot to add that he's from the UK, so you'll have to deal with the accent. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm not too bad. And you said Australian natural bodybuilder champion. Yes. I compete in Australia, but I'm English. But you're English. Yes. Making that very clear. Exactly. Yeah. And okay. I do have testicles. Yes, yes, you do. All right. So I guess today we are talking about male contest prep. So I guess just to intro you, how many shows have you actually competed in? Um, shows. I did. I've done A and B in 2013 states and nationals. I did IMBA Expo state titles, uh, nationals, and karate f- six. Six, six shows, shows and over about, the course of how many years? Uh, three years. Okay, so when did you start competing? 2013. Okay, and you've had the last, what, year off? Uh, it depends if you count Karatha as a prep or not. Really, oh. I've had a... 2014. Th- it'll be, by the time we compete at the end of this year, it'll be th- a technically three-year off-season, but I threw in a seven-day comp prep. Okay, cool. So let's go to um, back to, I guess, what your first comp prep. Why initially did you want to get into competing? What was it for you, like your main goal back then? Because I think it's important for people to understand like why they're competing, if they're yeah. doing it for the right reasons. Um, I was kind of at the point where I used to be more of a power lifter than a bodybuilder, but never really that sort of stereotypical, not saying that they're all fat, but stereotypical <laughs> fat power lifter. I'm going to get some I, abuse from yeah, power lifters here, like Brian Cook. Here we go. 7%. PTC, come at me. <laughs> We're not all fat. Yeah, Brian's shredded. Yeah. Um, but so it was kind of like everyone would say to me, you know, oh, you're strong, but you look pretty decent. I've always been curious in bodybuilding, and I've I'd put a few people on stage just... As, as friends and sort of as a coach, but not not an official coach back then per se. Um, and I thought it'd be good to try it myself before actually really going for it. Yeah, um, I agree with yeah. that. I think that I mean I don't know. Do you think the same? But I feel like coaches shouldn't prep people unless they've competed themselves. I, I would say more often than not. I think yeah. it's, I think it's hard to really know what you go through until maybe not necessarily. Um, the entire comp prep process, but at least having got to getting like, lean. excessively lean. Yeah, you know. I agree. Yeah, you want to be able to, as a guy, maybe get sub, you know, ten percent on a dexter, and as a girl, maybe sub yeah. twelve, fifteen. You know, Which is to six and below on a pinch for a guy, and ten to twelve. Yes, and body fat is probably one we'll save for another podcast because yeah. that's another issue that we don't really agree with. 
But at the end of the day, I guess so from where, where you were standing, Sean, you were also a very skinny guy for most yep. of your life. So your whole <laughs> life you still are. Still see yourself as that skinny guy in the mirror. But you were like, what, 50 kilos most of your life? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't really. I was a boxer. So I used to box under 57. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was 22, 23, I was still 57 kilos at wow. five foot nine. And so. how old are you now and how much do you weigh now? Uh, I'm 103 this morning, 103.4, <laughs> um, and I'm 30, how old? 32. 32. <laughs> 32. So I didn't start weight training per se until I was 24. Okay, so you've only had about seven years and you've gained seven about years, 53 yeah. kilos of yeah. muscle. Well, it, not all muscle. Is, yeah. It's solid muscle. <laughs> I'm 6%. I'd say what? how much of that do you think is actually muscle? And you got a DEXA done recently, <laughs> yeah. and how much of that was muscle mass? By, uh, according to the DEXA? Or? Yeah. Uh, 80 odd kilos 80 odd kilos yeah about 85 something like that yeah yeah okay and that's obviously including um, bone into that equation Ooh, I think yeah, it I was yeah I think so yeah yeah because obviously you got on stage last time at 84 so 86. you can't be 85 kilos yeah. of just sheer muscle but I wasn't shredded in that one I was I was good from the front but had the whole chubby glutes. Yes, so that's going to be your goal for the next one. Mm. So I guess getting into it, so you've put on, you know, a solid 53 kilos of mass, maybe 30 kilos of muscle in the last seven years as a natural, mm. which I just want to point that out because a lot of people listening are going to go, that's a load of shit, you can't steroids. put on steroids, <laughs> all of this. So that is a lot. So how much is that if we break that down over seven years, an approximate amount per year? Over 30, so 30 kilos of muscle, we're looking at, what, five to six four, kilos. Four, five kilos? And in yeah. some of that, you're in a deficit. So you probably, yeah. if you added up the time that you're in deficit, because this is what people forget, you can't just be dieting all the time or be, you know, you have to have periods of off-season. So realistically, you're probably putting on maybe five kilos a year in an off-season for a natural male, which is kind yeah. of the very upper limit, mm. I would say, for lean, um, well, natural gains. What would you say? What do you say when guys come to you and they say, look, I, I need to get ready for a show and you say, look, you need an off-season and they say to you, I want to put on 10 kilos of muscle, how long would you honestly say that would take a natural to put on if they're doing everything right, if they're doing training right, nutrition right, all of that for a natural male? What's the averages? Oh, I mean, unfortunately, some people never put on 10 kilos of muscle in their life naturally. It's, it's not as easy as people think. I think what they do is they read all these um, muscle development and flex online and all these sorts of stuff with Phil Heath and Jay Cutler and they say oh this guy's um, I don't know 290 pounds and he's come from this guy who was 190 pounds um, it's, it's super different when you're natural like if you can put on one to two kilos of actual lean muscle per year you're doing all right yeah you know but which it, might be four to five kilos on the scales yeah exactly yeah because you're talking water weight and all that sort of stuff yeah but, if you, yeah, I mean, in an entire year, if it's your new year, your first year, and you've got newbie all gains. newbie gains, then yeah, you might put on ten kilos. Like my first year of actual weight training, when I went on the cruise ships, when I was a PT on there, I went on at fifty seven kilos and came off at like mid eighties. Wow! So in not even a year, I put on about twenty kilos. Wow! But I had unlimited food. I was training twice a day. Um, I had all the protein, all the creatine, no steroids, um, but everything was perfect. Like it was literally my job to train. And you're in that um, newbie phase. And that's exactly it, is this new stimulus was just perfect for my body. Yeah. Um, I could train heavy and I could train well. And, and eat I could a recover, lot. And I could recover. Yeah, we're talking like, I would say 10,000 calories a day. Wow. Of, yeah, like it was And that's insane. the thing, some, some guys are pussies when it comes to mm. food and they are not prepared to eat those calories. No. And some bodies can't tolerate it. Like for you, you're probably more an ectomorph body type sitting yeah, at 50 solid. kilos year round. So for you to put on that mass, you had to eat that amount. Mm. So if, say, for example, we're talking more sort of, you know, an endomorph body type, kind of skinny fat guy. He's got a yep. bit of chub, but he's pretty skinny. So in terms of his diet, is he going to be pushing 10,000 calories a day? Or what are you going to do with him? Um, with the endos, it, it will probably, it, it can go one of two ways. You know, you can look at a sandwich and put on fat. Um, whereas an ecto can eat 10 pizzas and lose weight yeah, um, because it should have eaten 11. Um, and those sort of the, the genetically larger people, they, they can grow on a lot less calories, but you can also put on fat a lot easier. So that's when I like to add in, even in the off season, little bits of cardio here and there, just so you're actually 
putting the food that they're eating to good use and keeping their fat percentage at bay whilst trying to grow at the same time. So if you've got someone that's, say, um, kind of that, that fatter body type, they don't have a lot of muscle yet, though, they're mm. quite new to it and they're just getting into the gym, but you can tell that body fat-wise they are holding a bit, mm. um, would you straight away put them, say their goal ultimately is fat loss, would you, fo- oh, sorry, not fat loss, muscle gain, would you put them into a fat loss phase first yep. or would you straight away go, well, let's just get some gains? Um, I tend to like like a two week trial a trial period. So like some people, if you just go bang, give them a shitload of calories, um, they just get fat straight away. They feel like shit. Whereas oddly, some people you give them a load of calories and it's almost like their body needed it, and they will actually get bigger and stronger but leaner. But nine times out of ten, I do think that you should be bulking per se from a leaner body type. Why do you say that? Your body just responds better. Estrogen and all your other hormones are a bit more balanced. Estrogen and fat obviously go very hand in hand. The more fat you've got, the more estrogen you've got, the more estrogen you've got, the more fat you've got. It tends to be why women is, is a lot harder. Us guys have that magical hormone testosterone, whereas you tend not to have as much. Um, I would say that if you can chip off a lot of fat and really get all those hormones balanced, you can then grow a lot better. And your testosterone tends to be a lot more... Uh, freely usable as well when you're at a leaner state. And are we talking ultra peeled here or like no, just dropping a few bit of body fat? Just dropping a bit of body fat, you know. If you can get to... I, I don't think you should ever really go above... If you're really trying to put on muscle and you're tr- like really trying to, you should never go above 15% body fat. Like, I mean, we're talking... You should just about be able to see abs at your worst. 15% though, what about 15% on a DEXA? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe 20. What my DEXA <laughs> yeah. said the other day, yeah, we'll say 20 via. And that's why DEXA. I like, that's why I like how you said, you know, looking more by abs because that's probably a better measure mm. of are you holding conditioning better. I say for girls, I have the same theory, but I don't say abs because for girls, we tend to hold a lot of fat there. Yeah. But I'll say for girls, if you can't see like a, any form of hamstring or like yeah. a tie in there. That's split um, along the side yeah, of the Yeah, or any yeah. kind of semi-oblique lines, then you're kind of, yeah, pushing past that point in an off-season. We're talking not just for your general average person, but if you're someone in an off-season. Mm. So I guess what would you do if, say, now let's talk a bit more specifically into comp prep rather than just guys in general. General. So if you've got a competitor come to you for comp prep, what are the big things that you tell guys straight up that they need to know about? More for like the mental side of things, I mm. guess, when you're going to prep. Uh, first thing I do is I give them the stages of skinny. So basically, like as soon as you drop your calories, if need be, and you start your weight starts coming down. Like we've tried our absolute hardest to get that scale to go up and up and up and up and up. And say you hit that magical number of, I don't know, 90 or 100 kilos, the first thing that gets in your head is you dip below that 90 or 100, and you think that you're instantly losing gains. Um, so, and you'll go through what I call the stages of skinny, is basically the first few kilos you feel good because you've lost a little bit of fat and fluid, uh, and you'll start to see a bit more abs. The second sort of stage is when you actually feel you're losing nothing but muscle. And then you'll get all the way down to this point where you feel ultra skinny, um, but even though everyone else thinks you're shredded, and then you'll carb up just before a comp, for example, and you'll look absolutely amazing. Yeah, oh, that's sick, and you'll be like, oh shit, okay, now I actually look pretty good. Plus, when you get the tan on as well, it looks pretty cool. Um, but just be prepared so to go skinny. through these skinny stages. And we were saying as well the other day that if you don't have that point where you feel skinny, you're probably not lean you're enough. Probably not lean yeah. enough. Yeah, if you can't see your jaw bones and <laughs> yeah. you don't feel like skeletal from He Man, then yeah. you could probably got a bit more fat. To if lose. your glutes don't resemble a walnut when yeah. you squeeze them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to get leaner. Um, yeah, that's the first thing I talk about at stage of skinny. Um, I think it's, it's, it depends how seriously you're taking the comp. Personally, I, I think that... Getting peeled, like next level, shredded. And I, I think that people do comps for fun too much and because their yeah. friends are doing it too much. I, I think they, they'll get 10, 12, 15 weeks into a prep. Fucking and hate a prep it. And yeah, fucking hate it and think, you know, this is consuming my life and... My brain is only thinking about one thing, and that's what something that you've got to be prepared to sort of happen. Yeah. You know, no matter how much people say to you, oh, it's about work life balance, it, it is. But you've um, made this commitment. But you've made the commitment, and just be prepared that that's going to happen. You know, your brain, you're going to wake up and you just want to go and train. 
but you've got a job to do. If you're a personal trainer, you've got other people to train. Yeah, people think it's you know. easy for PTs to prep. Yeah, it's really not because, you know, you just want to train yourself. Yeah, or um, in the gym all day and then you've got to train twice a day and you're yeah. like... Um, and be prepared to be prepping your meals, you know, like when it comes to diet, I mean, I'm a flexible dieter, but the lower your calories go, the more bro you're going to go with your diet. So it's, yeah. you know, you're going to go more the sweet potato, chicken, blah, 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 all the boring sort of foods. That, Why is that? Um, caloric density. So, uh, so the, the lower your calories go, the more food you want per mouthful rather than calories. Like yeah. you, you start chipping out all those tasty things like Mars bars and pizza and all that stuff which is you know it's not a big food but it's high in calories yeah you know so if you have a mars bar that's fine you can fit it into your macros but then there goes i don't know 15 to 20 percent of your daily fats you know yeah. was that mars bar worth it you know yeah it's like nutella and things like that oh you it's know? delicious you know? but is it worth it that's yeah off season or early in your prep yeah and that's the thing about flexible dieting like um, do you promote with your clients when they're flexible dieting into shows to still add those things in occasionally if they can fit them in or do you rather completely remove them? Do you get to a point in prep where you go, no, no more of that fun stuff anymore? No, not really. I mean, I say don't add it in if you haven't been eating it already. Mm. But if you're someone that, you know, like it, it all comes down to discipline. Some people, they can have one spoonful of chocolate and then all of a sudden this monster comes out and they have to have the whole tub yeah you know me personally i'm that annoying person that if i want chocolate i can eat a half a square literally bite a square in half um and i'm done for two or three days you know um but it, it, you know you i have... find men tend to have better self-control with that than females yeah i don't know if that's a hormonal thing but uh, potentially yeah um or a chromium imbalance or something like that. <laughs> Maybe it's naturally got them. Um, but no, I don't say chop them out, but it all comes down to self-discipline. If you know that you can't stay away from those things, then you have the choice of do I keep them in constantly in small amounts or do I just not have them? Yeah. Think I, Personally, I don't like alcohol when it comes to combat. Yeah, neither. Yeah. I, I, I think if you can't go 20 weeks without alcohol, you know, you need to address that. Or issue, don't compete. Really. Or yeah. don't compete, yeah. You know, it's 20 weeks. Then you can go nuts in your off-season and do whatever. Become yeah. a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, to make up for it. Yeah, and lose all your gains yeah, and get exactly. fat. So but that's what it is. You know, you'll feel that as soon as you have one or two drinks, you just... One, you've got to then calorically balance out. And alcohol is really complicated when it comes to that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's not as simple as, oh, I can fit it into my calories. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work that way. You know, and you, you just don't feel very good in the gym. And in a comp prep, it's not worth it. Yeah. So it, it all comes down to how serious you how are. How bad you want it. Exactly. Yeah. And like you said, I think that people are doing too many shows just for fun. Oh, I'm just yeah. going to compete. And the thing they've got to remember, like I said on the one about the girls, is there's so much money involved if you're doing this yeah. just for fun. Like, there's better ways to spend your time and money. So I guess now you've talked a little bit about the things that you tell the clients. What are other things? You've said, obviously, they're going to feel skinny. What about things like uh, how it's going to affect your relationships, friends, family, mm. all of that yeah. for guys? Uh, I honestly don't know how many relationships have broken up during <laughs> comp preps. Um, I've had clients that a guy will come in with his girlfriend and they look like a really nice couple and the, one of the things I have to say to them is, is your relationship strong enough for this? Because it, it can suck, you know, you're going to become a, an absolute asshole. On those days where you're starving and you're, you're high days for another two or three days, um, but you know you can't cheat. You're going to become an asshole potentially, not everyone. Um, so you're going to snap at your girlfriend, and then she's going to get annoyed at you, and it can be tough on relationships. So it's it's something that you've got to know that a your relationship's strong enough, and b you need to put in strategies to kind of counter that, where you can just say to your partner, "I'm an asshole today. I need now to myself." And do you think that's okay to do? Do you think that you need to pre-warn people rather than just flying off the handle? Definitely. You know. But then do you also think that it's okay to be an asshole just because of prep? No, not at all. Like, more often than not, if you're an asshole anyway, you're going to be an even bigger <laughs> yeah. asshole in, in prep. And this is what steroids do as well. Oh, they yeah. bring out it even worse. So yeah. if we're talking natural here, multiply that by 100 oh. for gear. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't excessively believe in roid rage. I think if you're a dickhead in it the makes start, it worse. you go on gear, you're just an even bigger dickhead. And you can use that as an excuse. And it's the same as dieting. It's like... You can't use that as an excuse that you're dieting. No. Um, 
but at the, at the but same you time, you can be aware of it. You can be aware of it, exactly. And warn people. Yeah. You know? I think that's it, is you warn people. You say, look, I'm dieting, I have a low day, I apologize if I snap or whatever, but don't take it personally. But, but at the same time, you need to know that you can't do that. Yeah, what if you've got a job and you go say to your boss, sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm on a diet, I'm so a if I'm a dick yeah. today and I fall asleep at yeah. work, is that okay? Like, no, I mean, when it comes to re- a relationship and your yeah. partner, you can say that sort of stuff. In your job, you have to do your absolute best to be the same person you normally are. Exactly. You know, and, and that, not that, expect to be treated any differently just because you make a choice, a selfish choice to compete. Yeah, well, it's, it's very selfish and you need to be aware of that. Mm. I think a longer prep as well can solve some of those issues because yeah. a longer prep is less aggressive. More, less aggressive, more gentle on the body and you don't become much of, as much of an arsehole. Yeah, exactly. And I guess in terms of like, we're talking relationships again, and libido is a big one. Mm. Um, I've had personally, I've worked with males before, and I've had some that their libido is completely dropped, especially like I, I only really prep naturals, um, but their libido is decreased, their testosterone's dropped when we've had bloods done. Um, which is pretty normal as part of prep. Yep. So we've tried, obviously the goal with prepping a guy is to keep your testosterone and a girl as high as you possibly can in a natural setting. So what would you tell them in terms of like, have you been affected by like, <laughs> you know, sex drive, libido, all of that? Um, or do you think it's more just tiredness and fatigue? Because as a girl, I feel like mine's more, if I'm tired, mm-hmm. I, won't want to, I won't have a high libido. But yep. if my energy's pretty good and I've had good sleep and it's maybe a high carb day, then it's still there. So what do you think? I think that's where you have to get into like physiology. Um, your body is designed on that fight or flight. So when it comes to certain bodily processes, they're not as important as others. So if you're a dude and you're getting super, super lean, your body kind of wants to conserve as much energy as possible. Doesn't so, want to bang. So that morning boner <laughs> goes out the window. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, banging your missus, all that energy that you need for that. Uh, that goes out the window. Unless you want to do extra cardio. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, personally, no, I don't actually get affected by it because I have a ridiculous libido as it is. Lucky me. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a routine that every comp uh, morning I get up and smash one out um, <laughs> just so I feel better and I can fit my genitalia into my trunks. And so you don't get a boner on stage. Yeah, pretty much. I've seen that before. Yeah. It, happens. it happens. I've only seen it with guys on the gear. I yeah. haven't seen it for natural competitors. Maybe because their testosterone's dropped by maybe, then. No, there was a teen in one of the last... Oh, teens have um, higher. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> He's gone exactly, through. Yeah. So maybe I'm still a teen at, at heart. testosterone. Maybe. Maybe you're still, still peaking. And I think that definitely comes down to your natural testosterone levels. Yeah. Because, again, you're naturally someone, if you put on that much natty gains, you've had your bloods done before, and yeah. what have they said about your natural testosterone levels? It's very, very, very high. So you're very lucky. Like, yeah. you're one of the ones that it's not going to affect as much no. and you're an outlier ultimately like well, if you look you. at the norm so we can't expect that everyone listening to this is going no. to be able to put on the gains that sean's put on so do you think it's important for your males do you like them to get their bloods done pre-comp and have a look at certain mm. things in a perfect world i'd love that mm. um is it necessarily mm, not necessary because like can you use other ways to check or ask like, questions I, I ask some weird questions when i do my check-ins like i will literally ask my guys how is your boner? You know, it's a really weird conversation. I but, ask my girls how their periods yeah, are. How's your bitch? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Not quite um, like that, but yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll ask them things like that. Um, you have some horrible questions. How's your poop? How's your boner? Yeah. Are you wake up? Are you still wanting to have sex with your missus? Um, or is she just ugly? Is she, yeah. Do you need another <laughs> missus? Um, Things like that, but yeah, I mean, if you can get your bloods tested, why not? It's like I think it's like two hundred dollars if you personally request it to go and get done. I think it's, it's worth not, it. It's not that bad, and if you do one mid prep and end of prep, like it, it's very beneficial because the most important thing is when you finish prepping is then getting it back to that number. And I think a lot of people, that's why this whole it's going to be contentious, but this um, adrenal fatigue no, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yes. I mean, adrenal fatigue is just a collection of symptoms. Yeah, they, they can't know, actually, there's no science behind it. They don't know what to call it, so they diagnose it as there's that. Mm, same um, with chronic fatigue, same with all... They're is. all syndromes, they're not... Yeah. Yeah, and personally, I think that what you've done is you haven't... You've done all this hard work dieting into comp. My personal uh, specialism is reverse dieting into an off-season. If you revert... Every client who I've had that reverse diets with me, my reverse diet is compulsory, um, goes completely back to normal. And then they'll be bigger and leaner in their next off-season and closer to stage weight. 
Do you think, though, that people freak out if they get their bloods done and their testosterone's dropped and T3, maybe T3 or is coming down or something as well, their TSH isn't functioning as well, yeah. everything's a bit depleted? What would you tell your competitors? Because for me, I tell them that you, all we're trying to do in a comp prep is we're trying to fight that happening. Yeah. We're trying to do our best to maintain hormone levels, maintain metabolism, diet on as high calories as possible. But like ultimately... You pre- that's going to happen when you're yeah. getting that low levels body fat. Yeah, it's down regulation. Yeah. You know, when it comes to, if you look at the relativity of it in your body, it's just down regulated to what you need at that time. To live. You know, if you're 100 kilos, for example, and your specific level of whatever is at that level in your body, once you're 80 kilos, it's going to need to be less. So it's down regulated to that number because you've, you're a smaller human. Exactly. Um, but again, it comes back to fight or flight. Um, certain bodily functions are going to slow down because it's not as important as your body trying to hold on to the fat that you're trying to get rid of. You yeah. know, it's a stubborn little bastard that you've got to try and fight. Um, but things like diet breaks and refeeds and um, I'm not a fan of cheat meals, but um, sometimes they can work. Those sort of things can counter those. And just being in tune with your diet, you know, you need to know what will stimulate um the thyroid hormones yeah um foods and supplements and yeah exactly um hormones you obviously your fats that you're having grams per day are obviously going to get lower and lower and lower the the closer you get to comp you need fats to make the steroid hormones testosterone and progesterone estrogen all of that so obviously they're all going to come down a bit because you're not as much fat yeah um but yeah you can freak out seeing all of this when in fact it's going to happen and it's 99% 99% of the time is so easily reversible and they shit their pants and, say, and they go to the doctor and the doctor instantly says oh I need you on TRT testosterone replacement <laughs> therapy and it's like just eat some fucking fat yeah you know this is the whole point in a reverse diet is one or two or three grams of fat every week going up and up and up to get your testosterone up you know if it's really shit and you feel like shit and you haven't had a boner in three months then bang have lots of food Get that fat right back up there. Let's get your dick working again. You know, so Might you can get smash more your aggressive with the with the reverse in that setting. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's you just you can't fuck up that reverse diet, and that, I think that's We've one. We've all of, been there. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone does in their first comp. Is they? I kind of did it from about my first three or four. Oh, and you just you get off stage and you hit Krispy Kreme, and McDonald's, and KFC, and everyone wants to go to dinner. Everyone wants to take yeah. you out. You're not dieting anymore. Everyone wants to throw food at you, give yeah. you presents. It's always food as a gift rather yeah. than something else. Yeah, so it's it's hard, but it's super important. And then one, it, literally, you can those first four weeks post comp. You can fix a lot of those issues. I think people want to stop then and there. They're yeah. like, comp's done. I'm done. When okay. It's like you could go put on for a girl. I've seen clients put on in the first, not my clients, but seen stuff happen like for a chick, 10 kilos in a few weeks. For a guy, what, 15, 20 kilos? There goes your stretch marks and your hormones are now screwed and you're probably in a worse position even though you feel better for a day or two. You know, how bad does your stomach feel after that? But then at the same time, like we obviously, we were chatting to Eric Helms and Lane Norton about this topic a while ago, two absolute pros in the industry who I'll probably get on the podcast sometime soon mm, really cool. but um you know and, and Eric made a good point that we'd never really thought about and same with Lane probably had been also doing it and guilty of it like we were is being do, too gentle in the reverse diet process yeah. and not getting aggressive enough with some people um and like you said one of your clients stayed ultra lean yeah. for a while and then it didn't get to the point where you asked him how he was feeling mm. and he's like what did you say like I feel like, like shit. shit. Yeah, and you're like, oh, had, but you're staying shredded. Yeah. Haven't had sex in six months, you know, but yeah. you get too focused on how you look rather and his than how you calories are coming up, weren't they? Coming up, but coming up very slowly. Mm. And as soon as, instead of going up, say, 25 letting grams of carbs every two weeks, yeah, letting him put on a kilo and just going, bang, there's an extra 500 calories, mm. all of a sudden it feels a lot better. Yeah. And he's put on a tiny bit of body fat. But you need it. But he feels a lot better. At the end of the day, you're not going to walk around at that stage lean level like no, year round. And you don't want to. What do you feel like is a healthy? Say someone finishes a comp, because um, I don't want to keep you too long, make this podcast too long. But uh, for the girls, like I was saying, if they don't want to compete again, and they say they're finishing their comp and they don't have any goals to compete again for a few years or maybe whatever, and they want to maintain as close to that physique that they put onto stage as possible, mm. I say to my girls, look, anywhere in the three to five kilo range of regain weight wise is going to be a pretty healthy for you to be able to maintain once we get to about that point because a couple yeah. of kilos that's going to be water 
So what would you say in terms of guys, if they get off stage and they want to try to maintain where they're at, obviously within a healthy level of body fat, what would you say to them kilo-wise might be somewhere to shoot for until they kind of know they're going over that? If you... Different ways of looking at it. I think the joy of this is guys are easier than girls because yeah. guys, most of the time when we get to 12% or less, have abs. So as soon as you see those abs, you're fine. And that can be as high as 12%, you know, um, at, via pinches. This is um, So you can have a shitload of calories and still have abs and feel pretty damn good at 12% body fat, which is quite... There's no in your stage weight. Mm. I would say in terms of grams, if you want to stay close to stage weight, you've just got to look at it. If it's taking you... Um, I like to work on about um, 500 grams, so half a kilo per week to lose coming into comp. Yeah. So if you're 10 kilos overweight to get to your stage weight, then it's going to take you 20 weeks. Um, just look at in terms of that. How, how long would it take me to get on stage? If it's going to take you 40 weeks to get on stage, you know that you've pushed the off-season a bit far. So if you're going to say, I want to do... Um, if you go five kilos over stage weight, you know you're only 10 weeks out from yeah, potentially being stage weight. So I'd say, yeah, five... Guys can be about five or six kilos, you know. Yeah, I'd say even more. Maybe yeah. more, yeah. What are you now, about 12? <laughs> <laughs> 20? <laughs> 20 was strong. And I think it depends at the end of the day how comfortable you feel within that. That's because it, yeah. for for me, I'm the same as you. Like, we're both aiming on competing at the end of the year, which will be... If you guys want us to do some YouTube videos mm. on dieting together and prepping together, as I haven't mentioned, Sean is my... My partner. Better half. <laughs> um, we're both going to get back on stage at the end of the year. I've had three, almost to be almost four years off, I think, or three years. Mine, yeah. Three years off. Sean, when I met Sean, uh, he was did his last show, so it was about a yeah, year and a half ago. So it'll be around the two year mark um, that he gets back on stage. And so for us, we've probably put on a bit too much fat in our off season. I'd say we both. Because you're a feeder. I'm a feeder and the other thing is for me I had to balance out my hormones a bit better which is what I spoke about um, in the female one for Sean it was more that he did the ultra lean sort of staying lean how did you find the difference between your last prep where you stayed lean in your off season a lot more and you only probably went up what how many kilos since stage weight in that that diet between then and Karatha uh well I when I prepped for Karatha yeah I prepped in 11 days which, so what was your weight from that last comp to that one? Uh, I was my heaviest off season when I was still lean was, I think ninety, mm. um, and I got on stage at eighty six. Not super shredded. Not super shredded, and probably just a big water drop more than anything, um, and I could have been a lot leaner. Mm. Um, the time before that, I was eighty one on stage, and my first comp the lightest i was 77 so, so you still went from 81 to 90 so say maybe a few kilos that was muscle so you're yeah. still putting on about seven seven kilos and that was in a lean stage of off season yeah so i mean this time you've gone like maybe the almost 15 spectrum. 20 kilos yeah. um over the course of a year so it'll be interesting to see the change in muscle mm. mass i mean what was your theory in just going for more of a heavier bulk what were you hoping from that um being a, an ex well, I don't call myself a powerlifter, but someone who tends to like to lift heavy. I know that when I was sitting around 90 kilos and quite lean, uh, I wasn't as strong as I know I could be. Um, like I used to squat 220, deadlift 260, bench 150. Um, I wasn't anywhere near those numbers. And I know that as soon as I put on, well, I threw a shitload of calories in, put on a little bit of body fat, got my hormones even better, Started dating um, me. Started dating you and eating a lot more cake and, <laughs> and macro snacks. Um, far too much macro snacks, actually. Uh, they don't make you fat, though. They don't make you fat, <laughs> but when you eat 250 grams as a snack, uh, with other stuff it does, um, then I know that I was a lot stronger. So the theory on this one is being a, what you like to say an ecto, I like to say that ectos use a shitload of weight to grow. Yeah. Uh, more of the heavy weight to moderate weight rather than the endos, which would be moderate weight to lighter weight. Mm. Um, so we're kind of testing that theory. Yeah, because we're quite different body types. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, like I drop a kilo because I won't, like my calories are five to 6,000 calories a day. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, if I hit 4,000 calories, I drop a kilo and a half overnight. Yeah. Um, and you see already that there is some new extra muscle there. 
Yeah. And I think it's just the point that you'll get to your what everyone thinks is their natural limit, which for me was 1992, but you've got to just bust your ass and not stay that lean and throw a shitload of calories in, which meant putting on some body fat. Yeah. Know, if I've embracing. put on 15 kilos and 10 of it is fat and five of it's muscle, that's fuck, that's still five kilos. Exactly. And I think that was the problem that I made. I, I think I did 12 shows in a course of like three years back to back to back. Mm, so I never probably crazy. had more than like three or four months to bring my calories up. And I made no gains. Like if yeah. you look from me from show to show, I put on a little bit, but I think that was purely from introducing carbs back into my diet a bit. But when I look at those photos, there is not a lot of difference in that three years. So I wasted a lot of time and money mm. when, I mean, yeah, I did okay. I did well. But to actually get to a level of, say, wanting my pro card, I have now had, not that that's the ultimate goal, but I've had to take the time off. And that's kind of the same with you. We've both done quite well. Yeah. We've both won shows. We've both done all that. But we haven't been the epitome of bodybuilding. Like, no. you haven't won a nationals. Um, well, nationals for I, I, ICN now, IMBA. You've yeah. won an A and B nationals. Yeah. But yeah. you haven't beaten the guys that, you know, you no. see as where you want to be. And I'm no. the same with me. So we've taken that time now to step back and go, look, we're pretty good at this, but if we want to be the top end, we have to step back and make those changes. And I think that's how a lot of people should approach prep. Do your first one and just kind of see how you go. Yeah. And then if you want to actually take this seriously, you've got to critically look at yourself. Yeah. Like that's something that people won't do. I think that's a big one. So yeah. with yourself, like you had to sit back and obviously I'm coaching you now, but, and for me to say to you, like your biceps are shit, your upper <laughs> chest is shit, you know, all of these things. Is anything good? You know, yes. He has very large quads and glutes, um, shoulders. And, you know, to critically have someone say to you, if you want to be a pro, like that's what you have to bring up. So for you, what did you change now to bring up those lagging body parts off season that I've told you to grow and your hammies? Uh, you just have to get that difference in your brain between what do I enjoy training mm. and what do I need. It's a big one. What do I need to train? If you you're know? serious about this sport. Yeah. yeah. I fuck. I hate training arms. It's so boring. It's so boring, but I know I need to train them. So I basically train them two and a half times a week. You know, they have their little half session. So higher frequency, session. much less higher volume. frequency, less volume, less like smashing. So it'd probably be similar overall volume or a bit more, but frequency it's higher. It's like one and a half times the volume that I would have done before, but yep. split over two or three days. Is that so you don't get a sore and yep. you can recover and re that's, them? And that's, that comes back to being natural. Yeah. Your recovery is shocking as a natural. Mm. In Especially as a guy. Guys' recovery is slower than girls. Way slower, yeah. Girls can hit legs three, four times mm. a week and be okay. Guys have to hit them max twice, I would yeah. say, in a big session once. I, th I think you only need to hit them twice a week for guys as yeah. well. It's because of our recovery. Um, and depending on, again, if you're a bodybuilder or a physique athlete. Yeah, well, if you're a physique, you don't need to hit them at all. Nah, but if you've got no legs and you're a bodybuilder, yeah. hit them. Well, and that's them exactly it. Legs is... A strong point. For a you. strong point. I mean, it's still not a, the best, but it's a strong point for me. So I know I need to train back two or three times a week, chest two or three times a week, arms two or three times a week, and legs. If I go in the gym and I want to hit something, it can't just be legs because I love to hit legs. Yeah. It has to be, okay, I love to hit legs, but I need to hit biceps. Yeah, and or if you're doing nice. legs, you need to hit whatever you're lagging in that Which leg area. Like hammies, yeah. hammies over quads. And that's the thing, I love to squat, but squats technically don't build hamstrings as well as other things, so I'd be better off training hamstrings doing stiff legs and GHRs and blah, blah, blah. I think that's a big one, and like going back to the point of, like we always say train for enjoyment, but at the end of the day, if you're doing a competition, yeah. it's when completely different level, if yeah. you reach this level. It's like a, looking at an athlete, I bet... You know, Usain Bolt doesn't really... Maybe he doesn't enjoy the gym as much as what he does yeah. track work. Um, or he might not enjoy his, you know, mobility sessions or something like that. But he, he has... Yeah, who bloody loves mobility? But you have to do it so to be better at the sport. So at the yeah. end of the day, like, what would you say to someone that, you know, is they really like bodybuilding, they enjoy going to the gym, and they're not sure whether competing's for them or not? What would be the big things that would really get you over the line there and knowing whether they should be competing or not? First things, for, have you been to a show? Mm. Go to a show. So many people say, I want to compete, uh, and they don't really have a decent reason why. 
you know. And are you ready to get half naked on a yeah. stage in front of thousands of people yeah, and be there's, judged? There's <laughs> two thousand people yeah. in some of these uh, audiences. Look at the Arnold's. Look at the audience oh, there yes. at the amateurs. Yeah. Well, the post from ICN the other day for the Melbourne fitness show says there's going to be thirty thousand people. Yeah. You know, in the whole of the expo, yeah. but uh, do you want thirty thousand people looking at you in a g-string and a banana hammock? Mm. You know, it's if you can't take your kit off to show me in the gym, not all your kit. Um, then how are you going to go on stage? But yeah. Go and watch a show. Yeah. You know, if you look up there and you think this is gay and this is stupid, don't do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's ultra gay. But, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, tan and Rocket. G string. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I still think it's gay. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, go watch a show. Um, and are you prepared to. Is, it, is this going to be a priority for you? Yeah. And you've got, you got to say this about sort of making it sound like you're you know, about to go to university and give it your whole life. Yeah, you don't want to be so friggin' serious about it that you've got no life, yeah. Is this something you really enjoy and do you find training fun? Mm. I think if if you don't have that intrinsic motivation to train, you'll struggle. Do it, yeah. Yeah, don't do it. It's like when people, people go to compete, I have it all the time with girls. I'd say more than guys, but I get girls come to me and say, I want to compete, and then when I say... So what's your training like? Do you enjoy the gym? And they go, no, but I really like the bodies of the girls yeah. on stage. It's like, do you think yeah, you that do. they just wake up like that? Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to actually, like, bust your ass in the gym. Like, somebody said to me the other day, I want to look like Summer. Summer Bernard, oh, Jesus, IFBB, yeah. Bikini Pro, one of our good friends. We'll get Summer on the show too. But like, I said to this chick, how long have you been training for? And she said, oh, a couple of months. And I said, Summer's been training for 10 yeah. years. She's taken her whole life to, to look, look like, like that. that. <laughs> yeah, mm. exactly. Some people are genetically blessed, let's yeah. be fair. And these people are assholes yeah. that literally look like they could get on stage out of the womb. But unfortunately for you and me, like it's always been skinny chasing yeah. gains. So I think people are shocked sometimes with both of us that we used to be like that. We'll yeah. have to maybe pop some, pop some photos up along this podcast. But um, yeah, I mean, anything else? I'm going to wrap it up there because we're at about 40 minutes. So Jesus. Um, anything you, else you want to add to, I guess, guys in the competitive sense? Um... Protect your boner. <laughs> it's an important thing. If you're, it's a big thing. If you're starting your comp prep and your libido is already shit, then you're probably not in a good place. Get your bloods um, done. I would say, yeah, get your bloods done. No, I would say, uh, like I said, first things first, go and watch the show. Second thing is don't start. I mean, not like I'm never talking about comp prep, but don't bulk from an overweight or fat position or fatter mm. position. Make sure you're already in a good position, like a bit leaner, and then go from there. Um, my thing is, it's for guys, the thing that pisses me off, and it makes me sound like a bit of a dick, but as a feedback judge, I think it, it's a bodybuilding show. It's not a diet contest. Same with the girls, same thing I said to them. Jesus, yeah, it's not about like, dieting. It's not, you need to have muscle to be able to diet and show off. Mm. Like, the, if, if you're getting on stage and you're five foot nine, you're getting on stage at 65, 70 kilos as a guy, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, put on some fucking muscle. Yeah, go and do fitness. Yeah, we'll go and do, yeah, we'll go and do fitness, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a division for everyone. Um, in ICN. Yeah. In ICN. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's, um, yeah, have the muscle there before you diet down. If you've got more muscle, your dieting is easier because it's what chews through the fat. Yeah. Um, Keeps your metabolism. Usually you can eat more too. Yeah, and have a good off season. You know, if your calories are already quite low and you're inconsistent with your calories, you're going to struggle yeah. when you're dieting and you're getting into the last few weeks and your calories are going way down and down and down. Like, we're starting my prep now from five to 6,000 calories. My last prep, I think the lowest I got was 3,500 calories. So it's still quite high. If you're starting your prep from two and a half maximum... It's what girls eat. Yeah, it's what girl, It's where girls should be starting, really, yeah. 2,000 calories would be awesome. If you're someone that's lifting and male, you should be at least on 3,000 3, calories three, plus. Oh, like, yeah, minimum, yeah. In a, in a maintenance point, yeah. like, realistically. And I, I honestly think guys don't eat enough. Like, that's, no. that's the biggest thing I yeah. see with males. You don't eat enough for how hard you're training, and then you whinge about not getting gains. Yeah. Like, eat some food, yeah. be consistent with it. Don't have a day where you eat 6,000 calories and the next day you eat 1,000. Yeah, like, it doesn't exactly, work that yeah, way. Yeah. Or the other big one I see with guys, I don't know if you see it, is they smash way too much protein, yeah. not enough carbs, not enough good fats. Yeah, especially as a They think natural. protein's gains. Yeah, because they see that Phil Heath is on two to three grams per pound of body weight. It's like, yeah, but Phil Heath in his off-season is 290, 260 on stage. You know? And you don't see the carbs and protein he yeah, eats. And that's the carbs exactly and fats, yeah. yeah. So it's, we don't need as much protein. And more often than not, ectos, like myself, like, what am I on? 
600 grams of carbs. 600 on a low day. People forget that carbs and protein go together to make increased exactly. muscle mass. Yeah. yeah. They think, oh, protein, protein, protein. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and enjoy your training. If you mm. don't enjoy your training, you will not enjoy comp prep. Yeah, and I think another one to go with that point that I didn't really talk about with the girls enough is you have to actually put in the work in the off season. Yeah. I think that people think that it's just the contest prep is that 20 weeks that you're dieting. Whereas for me, and I know for you as well with your clients, we prefer to work with them in the off season to know mm. that they're consistent oh, yeah. there because if you're not putting on the gains then, don't expect to make gains coming into a show. Yeah. Unless you're again on gear, naturals don't make gains when they're dieting yeah. very rarely, maybe for the start of prep and that's it. So yeah, I guess any other little summaries? Otherwise we'll wrap it up there, but we'll be sure to get you on the show again. I think we're pretty good before we talk the end of the, the day away. I mean, the other big one is hire a decent coach. Yeah. Never do your first prep alone. Um, so if they do want to contact you, RE, comp prep, um, anything like that, what's the best way to get at you? Uh, email. So you can email me at info at mclaneytrain.com. I'll pop that down below. Yep. Um, I do not answer my phone <laughs> because I'm, I'm a McLeany and we have a phobia of phones for some reason. And you're not a big social media fan I'm either? Not social media what about fans, Facebook? So can people hit you up on Facebook if they need some assistance? Uh, preferably not, but if, <laughs> <laughs> uh, email is better. But if you want to, yeah, just chuck my name into Facebook and throw me a message. But then from then on, it'll be email. Yeah, so all contact via email. Um, otherwise, Sean works from Brevo Fitness in Scarborough. <laughs> yeah. So you can always pop down to the gym there and his bio and everything is on the wall as well as um, on the Revo, Revo's Instagram, I think, and stuff like that if you want a few more details. Um, but Sean is, don't think, are you taking any more clients for the rest of the year for comp prep or anything like that? Uh, not for season A because it's too close. Yeah. Um, even though it's, what, 13, 14 it's weeks? It's way too close to prep someone, that, no. Yeah. I like minimum. We like 20 minimum, weeks. yeah, 20, yeah. 25 weeks. Potentially for season B, but probably not because I'm competing myself and I already have like five as it is. So we're looking at next year. Yeah, so next year. So if you want to get on stage next year or you even want to make some off season gains, I'd probably get in with Sean now yeah. so that you can really prep for the rest of the year in a gains period. Um, the other thing is obviously he just does normal diet and training stuff as well. You don't have to just be a competitor to work with no, him. He, um, even if you're just a skinny guy out there and you want to put some gains on, that's then his specialty. that's his specialty. So hit him up. I know your pain. Exactly. So if you want to hit up Sean, get some gains, get some good bonus, he is your man to go to. <laughs> I could give you a bonus. <laughs> Gross. And um, thank Instagram. you for, oh yeah, your Instagram. I forgot about his Instagram that oh, he yeah. never uses. You can also have a look at that, but there is nothing on it, which is, There's, what is it? At McLeany Train? I think it's McLeany Train, yeah. Yeah, on Instagram. I have 380 followers and about nine posts. Yeah. So some riveting stuff there. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, at the end of the day, so just having a big social media account doesn't make you a good coach, as you can see here. Um, so make sure that you hit up any of those details if you want to get in contact with him. If you like this podcast, comment below if you want more from Sean on the podcast. He is a wealth of knowledge for guys and girls. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for being on the show, Sean. That's all right. See y'all. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. If you enjoyed this episode or any others, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube and give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have for any future episodes you'd like me to cover. Otherwise, also subscribe on iTunes, leave a review on iTunes so that I can get that feedback. Obviously, this is a free podcast, so the only way we can keep progressing it forward is getting your feedback and getting your following. And I really thank you for being around for that. If you would like to get in contact with myself or anyone that I have had on the podcast, I always leave the information below. Otherwise, you can always jump on my website, alisround.com and fire any questions at me from there. Hit me up on Instagram at Ali Round and the same name on Snapchat. Have a great day and thanks for tuning in.